eventually it spills out into other networks. It may start in one, it may start in Twitter, it may start in on the web, but it eventually ripples outside of the web and in, into the mainstream media. And so um, both are really important. People that have a lot of influence with a lot of people and people that have influence in small groups. So <clears throat> I talk about this term kind of jokingly <laughs> and I call it a web liberty. So I did a list <laughs> oh, nice. top 10 sites, kind of tongue in cheek. Because you know the interesting thing about this topic is that there's a lot of folks out there that are kind of anti-personal brand. You know, and you're really into yourself. If you're thinking of yourself as a brand, you've got to stick up your ass and you know, you pull yourself. <laughs> and the irony is that those people are working much harder at their own personal brands than anybody else in this room. Because really what it comes down to is if you're a human being and you have a personality, there are many, many similar characteristics to that of, of, of what a brand is. So I came up with this number four. You stop thinking of yourself as a, as a person years ago, now you're a brand. And I wouldn't recommend getting carried away with this. And it is, you know, you don't want, you don't want to become full of yourself. But it is interesting, I mean, as you guys are in social networks, you can kind of see, you see the personalities come up and someone's kind of figured out a little niche to carve, right? Or they've come up with a little, some of us put cowboy hats on on occasion, you know, and they stand out, right? You're like, why does that do that? Well, I live in Chicago. Um, so here's a few people that I would categorize as these personal brands who have leveraged them very successfully. Does everyone know who Guy Kawasaki is? Because mm -hmm. we're on social media, right? And so he's one of the people that, because he's built up his personal brand, he's built up businesses with it. He's very influential in the entrepreneurial group. He's, he's, uh, and the, the, the interesting thing about Guy is that not only did he start these ventures, but he uses his personal brand capital to fuel them. Twitter is a, I mean, it's, it's a, he's now, what, 40,000 followers, mm -hmm. something around that, right? I mean, how do you think he's promoting all time? Any of his businesses, Truman's, right? He leverages his own personal brand that people identify with to actually build his products and services. I just said products. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we all know who Robert Scoble is, right? Same thing. Robert's a personality. Started off with, you know, interesting thing about Robert, and again, I see the debates all the time. Well, you know. I've never heard of Robert Scoble. It doesn't matter if you've never heard of Robert Scoble because Robert Scoble is really important. Interestingly enough, he was only important to tech people initially. Then he became important to social media people. And now the marketing people are listening to Robert Scoble. So he started off with one group, and now he's actually known by three different groups. It doesn't matter if my mom doesn't know who Robert Scoble is. Right? So you've got Scoble, who um, has also built up his brand. You know, he goes out there and he's himself, he's sort of affable and, you know, kind of jolly. Uh, anybody know who Seth Godin is? Okay, same thing. I think, um, you know, this is a, when someone goes out and makes an action figure of you, then you know you've done something right in this whole kind of personal brand genre. Um, I'm not sure, I think the unicorn actually came from his, his, uh, his recent book because he mentions that the unicorn and the factory. But anyway. Seth is really, um, if you work in the marketing field, most people know who Seth Godin is. They know his books. Um, and he's, you know, Seth is interesting because he built up a lot of awareness around his books, kind of the traditional way, but he's mastered social media, specifically blogging. He's not on every network, but he's really mastered blogging. And you know, if you look at it, every day there's a post, right? And, and People have come to expect that. They want that. That's how they, they feel like they've connected with Seth. Now he has his own network called Tribes, where a lot of people get together and they interact on that. And um, that has, that's how he's built his personal brand. I think he also is synonymous with bald. <laughs> but hey. Um, so I came up with this. I like to always do you know five U's or B's or whatever, just so people can remember. So these are sort of the five B's of, of uh, building the brand you know which is a fancy way of saying personal branding. And um, I talk about this notion called life streams. I did not coin that phrase, but I talk about it often. And uh, what a life stream is, is you guys all have multiple of these. If you're in this room, you know, basically anytime you're uploading to Flickr, anytime you're sending out a Twitter, an update, a status update, basically sending out streams of your life that goes out to maybe one network, maybe several. And so when they go out, they oftentimes intersect. A couple examples of this. We were just having a conversation over here about, well, okay, so I have Twitter linked up to Facebook. It means that people 
my Facebook community sees all my tweets. They don't see conversations. They don't see the at, but they do see you know anything I'm sending out. So they're kind of intersecting there. On my blog, I bring in, I import my Flickr feed. I am, you know I have friend feed there, which imports all those other feeds. Uh, I have Twitter on there. So you know we're building all these manifestations of our personal live streams, and at some point they don't live in silos, right? They all kind of connect some, somehow. So it's this idea of we're kind of ubiquitous now. We can be anywhere and in and seemingly in multiple places. I kind of live that today, right, Bill? Mm -hmm. Right? Between the Twitter stream and the live streaming and then reading <laughs> off a piece of paper about the 20 different things I said today. And it, it seems like it's really eight people, but it's only one in reality because I have multiple streams out there. So we can now be everywhere at once. We can be ubiquitous and we can have all these streams working. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it actually poses a lot of challenges. Um, and so if you take that first step and you publish or push out or facilitate multiple streams um, that do intersect, well, now you're, you're at a point where you're managing what I call a social system. And it can get a little hairy because you can actually quickly lose control of your social system and create these planets that end up spinning off and dying, right? They become neglected and they're no longer part of your, your ecology, they're no longer part of your system. And so the art then becomes to not only sort of publish these streams, but now really figure out which ones matter to you in your system, take care of them, make them work for you, have a strategy behind it. So you, so, you know, you have this social system, you want to be social, but you want to effectively manage all of that. And you know, really they do kind of revolve around you. I mean, you're the one that's actually feeding all those things, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the social media is a wonderful thing. We can use it to help people. We can use it to do business in a more personal way. But at the end of the day, in reality, I mean, we're building these things, right? We, can't, we kind of are at the center of it. Um, and so we have to be very conscious. This is where it kind of dovetails with this idea of having personal brand and building it, is that um, you know, at some point, if someone's seeing all these sort of dead, neglected areas, that, ne that, that reflects poorly on your own personality and your own personal brain, on you as an individual. Um, be interesting. This is uh, Russell Davies, and he talks about this idea of, of being interesting. Um, and one of the things that he does is that he just documents things that he sees. He documents, you know, he takes a walk in the park and where he's been, he takes pictures, and he's an interesting person. And he's also interested in other people, which also helps quite a bit. Um, but he's interesting, and so people want to find out more about him. So if you're looking to, you know, if your objective is you want to start a business or you want to represent your organization and have draw attention to it. Being interesting actually does work. You know, people are drawn to interesting people. And if you're interested back in them, that's even sort of a better combination. Another thing uh, Russell does is you know he shares, he's very open with everything he produces, all the knowledge that he has, he gives it all away. Uh, <clears throat> this is another Seth Godin reference, this idea of being remarkable and doing something worthy of a remark. And this really is kind of the number one thing when it comes down to having a successful product, successful marketing. People just won't talk about things that are bland, that don't matter, that don't add value. You know, Seth uses the analogy of, okay, we've all seen brown cows, and if you're driving through the countryside, and one day you come across a purple cow, you want to stop, and you're going to take pictures of it, and you're going to remark about that purple cow, and you're going to tell everybody you know, holy shit, I saw a purple cow on the side of the road. <laughs> and so, again, you have to know why you want to actually build a personal brand online, but if you want it to be really effective, this is really what you're going after, is um, doing something that really stands out. And lastly, <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, you know, you have to be yourself. Um, this whole medium that we call, you know, we call it social media, but you know what it comes down to is what all this does is it acts as um, an amplifier. Now, I forgot who I was talking to this about. It might have been one of these Twitter conversations, but I was thinking about Bill Cosby, who had this comedy skit from probably about 20 years ago. 